So even at the moment of death, they were able to take meaning right. out of that moment exactly. Exactly. of death. Exactly. You see, there is what I'm used to calling, uh, when speaking to my students, as the uh, tragic triad of human existence, consisting of pain, death, and guilt. Nobody is spared suffering from diseases, pain. No uh, one of uh, uh, us human beings uh, can uh, escape death, finally. And there is no one who uh, would, uh, could keep himself free from guilt. It is not possible. But always, as I put it uh, before, always suffering, uh, tragedy can be turned into a triumph, into a human achievement. And as to death, it could well serve as a, an uh, incentive to to uh, responsible action, because unless we were mortal, imagine if we were uh, immortal, then we could postpone everything. There were no hurry. There were, there were no need to do something right now. But there is a wonderful word of an author who has uh, not written but said it about 2,000 years ago. You find it in the Bible. Uh, it is Hillel. H-I-L-L-E-L, -L -E -L, who uh, once said, if I'm not doing it, who will do it? If I'm not doing it right now, when shall I do it? But if I'm doing it only for my own sake, what am I? This means no really human being. Because a human being is not someone as psychotherapeutic systems depict the human being. He is not someone he, that is concerned primarily and originally with uh, uh, complexes, conditions, conflicts, and problems going on within his psychological system, intrapsychically, as, as it were. But normally, fundamentally, originally, primarily, basically, any human being is concerned with something out there in the world is concerned with someone out there in the world, a work to do, a job to complete, a task, a meaning, a mission in life waiting for him, for him exclusively to be materialized, to be actualized by him and by no other person. Right now, who else if not he? And finally, this he doesn't do for himself for his tranquility, for his uh, uh, discharge of tensions, for his uh, inner equilibrium, for getting rid of the stimuli, uh, the, uh, of the superego which uh, is dissatisfied, or uh, obeying the, uh, the father image. But he's doing it for the sake of a cause to serve, or another person to love, and not and never and never for himself only. Thus, this is the, uh, what man can do. And imagine if he were not mortal, then he could postpone everything. There would not be the one-third, the second-third of Hitler's dictum. There would not be sense in the formulation when, uh, when if not now, because he's immortal. To get back to suffering and despair, sometimes it seems that some people seem to have a much heavier load than others. Do these people not feel after a while, can I still continue to take meaning? You wouldn't believe it. It comes to mind that there is a specific statistically, empirically, strictly empirically study that was published a couple of years ago by two famous psychologists. And it turned out by way of, stat uh, not only of statistics, but, but uh, by test batteries, that people prone to death, who knew that they were, uh, they were dying soon, had a higher sense of meaning than normal populations. And... Uh, if I tell you the story that uh, the dean of the School of Nursing at the University of Texas, in the Texas Medical Center in Houston, a famous center, she wrote me of a case of a young girl, very young girl, 17 years of age or so, 
who uh, was uh, paralyzed totally, also up to her neck, and could only, by use of a mouth stick, type letters. And uh, uh, Dean Stark, that nurse, uh, told me within a f three lines, I remember this letter, she told me that that girl is reading newspapers day by day, watching television, and as soon as she comes across an individual in a tragic life situation, she types with the mouth stick on the typewriter letters offering them consolation and comfort. And she has some credibility, believe me. And she, uh, the, uh, the dean, uh, Stark, say, she's, uh, says she's full of confidence. She has a strong sense of abundant meaning in her life. While others who cannot see meaning under the best conceivable conditions take their lives because they are frustrated. They are caught in an existential vacuum, in a sense of meaninglessness and emptiness. I have described it in uh, a book of mine as soon as in 55. Since that time, it has ever more been increasing worldwide. You find you are, you are facing it not only in Western countries, you are facing it in the so-called uh, third world, you are facing it in uh, communist states and communist psychiatrists also describe it in, the, um, uh, in their literature, what Frankl uh, tells us about uh, this uh, existential frustration is also observable in the communist countries. They commit, they so commit, are you proceed. saying that in order to find meaning it is necessary to experience suffering? I wouldn't say it is necessary to experience suffering. What I say is just that meaning can be found under each and every condition in life, even under the, uh, under the worst conceivable conditions, provided that it is a situation you cannot change. Remember, I said this explicitly. That means provided that there can, the cause of your suffering cannot be removed. If you can remove the cause of a suffering, say in case of a cancer, by surgery, you have to undergo surgery. If you are suffering from a severe uh, compulsive obsessive neurosis, you have to seek psychotherapeutic help. They are in, within the realm of uh, logotherapy, for instance, certain techniques that can be applied with uh, much success, as ha has been evidenced not by logotherapists, but by behaviorists. And finally, if you are confronted with, the social, with sociological conditions that have caused your suffering, then you are called upon to change the situation to remove the cause of your suffering by political action, for instance. But in this respect, I would like to make another additional statement by telling you something that I, a couple of weeks ago, have, have told my professors and students forming my audience at the Karl Marx University in uh, Moscow. I was invited by the pro-rector to uh, uh, stay there for a month and to lecture there on my teachings, but I had only time for uh, two uh, days. And I told them, don't think that I can, came to, he, to you from the West in order to sell you any political opinions. No. I don't come as a politician but I speak to you an, on a meta-political level. This means that I recognize only, on a worldwide scale, only two styles of politics, or two types of politicians. The one is he, the politician, who thinks 
that the end justifies the means, any means, while the second type remains fully aware that there are means that would desecrate even the most noble end. And they were applauding, they had an understanding. And so I don't come into any country with a preconceived political conviction. I'm not entitled to judge it. But I have the responsibility to accept any call wherever in the world to deliver a message if any should uh, be present and to, uh, to act as an MD, as a doctor of medicine. And as such, I had to take the Hippocratic Oath that compels me to try to offer a cure to each and every individual or also population well, if they invite me to do so. Dr. Franklin, I'm going to ask you now, as you know, this country is going through a very difficult time. We have an economic recession. People have become insolvent or without jobs. The political future is far from settled. Do you have a message for us, a message that could give us hope and meaning? You see, the only message I can deliver is a principle that I have adapted, uh, um, adopted, excuse me. I have adopted, I well remember uh, throughout the days I had to spend in Auschwitz. Uh, there is statistical evidence that my chance to survive Auschwitz Real statistic evidence was uh, uh, 29 to 1. And I had the feeling that it was like that. And still, I applied the philosophy of Sir Karl Popper, which, whose nucleus means that you cannot uh, uh, prove any hypothesis. The only thing you can do is falsify it, show that it is not valid, that it is not tenable. And without uh, knowing uh, his philosophy, I only met him the first time a couple of years ago, uh, I applied this theory in as much as I told myself, Victor, the chances are very, very low and small. Probably you will be uh, sent to the gas chamber. And still, there is nobody who can guarantee me and convince me with 100% certainty that I shall not survive but end in the gas chamber. As long as I have no guarantee that I will have to die within the next days, I continue behaving and acting as if I would spare this fate. Dr. Frankel, 